Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. It's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable, but to stand together as one. Turn into sooner followers, streaming. Every day, various platforms, trust me, you'll find a way, soon the followers. Her name is mentioned in many books, such as Bukhari, Muslim, and even Riyadh Salahin. Before the Prophet met Khadija, this woman was his first love, but refused his hand in marriage. Join Ustada Layla Nashiba as she takes us on the journey and teaches us the story. everybody to our series, The Heroines of Islam. And something that I spoke about earlier today, uh, one of the things that a lot of Muslims today uh, fail to realize that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also his companions, they were human beings just like you and me. And what does that mean? That means that they had the same uh, uh, feelings, emotions that we experience in our lives. They felt things that we feel. They cried, they laughed. They were not gods. They were not goddesses. They were not these extra uh, uh, superhero, uh, superhuman uh, people. The thing that made them different from us is that they just had a strong belief in Allah. They were stronger in their belief in Allah than we are. That's the difference. But they went through ups and downs in their lives just as we do. And the good thing about them is they serve as mentors and role models for us today. All we have to do is learn about them. And by learning about them, we'll find the ability to handle our trials in life. Well, today I'm gonna do the story of one of the heroines of Islam who we hear about all the time. Her name is Um Hani. Um Hani, her name is mentioned in many hadiths, Um Hani. This name is very, very popular in Islam. When you read most hadith books, you will see her name mentioned. By the way, Um Hani. Um Hani is the one with the yellow dress. Remember Um Hani? Um Hani is the one that Imam Bukhari put in his collection, that she was wearing a beautiful yellow dress. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told her how beautiful she looked and that yellow dress she had on. You know, again, these hadiths get bypassed, even though they're in the most authentic book after the Quran. The most authentic book after the Quran is Bukhari. That's where you will find all the hadiths about the colors that the female companions used to wear. You will find the hadiths about their makeup that they used to wear, you know, and all of that. But those hadiths get bypassed for some reason. Well, Um Hani was the one with the beautiful yellow dress. That was her favorite color. Just like Aisha, ready Allahu Anha, her favorite color was pink and red. Um Salamas was, uh, was blue. Zainab's was green. 
All of that shows that there are no restrictions in Islam as far as what colors, the prophet's wives, the female companions, they didn't walk around wearing dark colors as Um Atiya tells us in Sahih Bukhari. She said, we females, we never wore dark colors unless someone died. And in that case, we would put on dark colors and we would stop wearing our makeup. We wouldn't apply any makeup until we were done mourning. So that hadith is right there in Bukhari gets bypassed too. That's the Dalio that women wear makeup. Makeup is not haram, subhanAllah. Allah. So I'm gonna teach you guys today the story of um, Um Hani. There's something about Um Hani that many Muslims in the West, and I'm emphasizing this because the Arabic women know about Um Hani. Um Hani is a very favorite uh, companion of many of the Arabic women because the story of Um Hani, everybody loves a love story. Um Hani's story and her relation with the prophet is something of wonderment because what few Muslims in the West know, Um Hani was the first woman, I repeat, the first woman, I repeat, she was the first woman who the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fell in love with. That's new to many of you. Everybody believes that, that Khadija radiallahu anha was the first woman he ever loved. That's not true. You think about it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not even meet or marry Khadijah until he was 40 years old. Do you guys think that there were no other women around until four, he was 40 years? Supana Allah, Supana Allah. Well, let me introduce everyone to Um Hani. So sit back. This is a wonderful story. You know, a wonderful story of how sometimes we just miss out on things in life. Sometimes things happen and we find ourselves in a situation where, you know, we can't do anything about it. And then sometimes life happens and we just miss out. You know, wow, I should have. How many of us do that? I, I should have. Man, I should have. Man, I should have. I missed out on that. Well, this is one of those stories, you know, where we miss out. You know, you sit back and say, wow, man, what was wrong with me? I should have, but I didn't. Or wow, man, I missed out. Our prophet Muhammad was a human being. You know, he went through that, the miss outs, you know, we sisters, we go through that a lot. Wow, I shouldn't have turned that brother down. Wow, that was a mistake. What? Oh, should have had a V8. We all go through that. Well, sit back because you're gonna see that what we go through is nothing new. It's what humans have been going through since Allah created Adam and Eve. So let me put this, um, the, uh, the stings down here so you guys can see. Plus the people like to take PowerPoints, I mean, uh, screenshots. And feel free to take a screenshot of the PowerPoint so you can print it out and share this wonderful story with your children, especially your daughters. Okay. So let me make this big screen. Let me start off with the Zoom people first. Yes, and by the way, I am, oh, I didn't, okay, here I am. I'm going live on Instagram now. There we go. So for those of you on Instagram, inshallah, I should be live now. There, I forgot to push the button. <laughs> okay, it's live on Instagram. Okay, let me share Zoom to PowerPoint and share you guys here give me a second i know you got a black screen give me a second um honey 
It's one of my favorite stories too. Um Hani and Atika. Um Hakam. Those are my favorite, some of my favorite female companions. Okay, hold on here. Okay. That's the PowerPoint. Okay, everybody should be able to see my PowerPoint. Get ready to make it one screened. Put this out the way so I can see. I'm gonna move this out the way too. Okay, so tonight, inshallah, we're gonna do the story of Um Honey. Um Honey, ready Allahu Anha. Now, for those of us who read uh, the Hadith books, such as Bukhari and Muslim, even if you read Imam Nawawi's Riyadh Salihin, Um Hani, that's a name that you will frequently come upon. As for those of you who have never heard her name before, I want you guys to understand she's an amazing woman in the history of Islam. And she is also one of the female companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was extremely beautiful very beautiful. In fact, she looked just like the prophet. Why? She happened to be his cousin. Her real name was Fakita, and she was the daughter of Abu Talib. Y'all know who Abu Talib was. Abu Talib was the uncle of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the one that uh, looked out for him even though he did not convert to Islam. Well, she was the older sister. She was Ali, ready Allahu on her. She was Ali's older sister and Jafar's older sister. So she was older than Ali, older than Jafar. She was close to the age of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she grew up with him. As a child, after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost his mother and father, and after his grandfather died, remember Abu Talib took him in, and she was around the same age as the Prophet. So they were kids, they were children, childhood friends who grew up together. They were first cousins, but they were close, like a brother and a sister and they loved each other and they grew up in a family of love you know subhana allah and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam became very attached to his cousins all of them including her and he had a lot of respect for his uncle but you know how it is when we're children when we're children we're like brother and sister we can play together and run around together and spar back in those days they would spar play with swords and bows and arrows and ride horses and camels together but then as the as you grow up things change you no longer look at a person in the same way as being like a sister or a brother you will start to see in that girl, wow, she's growing up, she's turning into a woman. And you will start to see things about her that you like, you know, her honesty, her trustworthiness, her intelligence. And you will look at the boy that you viewed as being like a brother who he used to spar with and ride camels with as, oh, wow, he's growing up into a man. He's handsome. He has a beard and all of that. Well, this is what happened. These two grew up together in the same home. You know, they were first cousins. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, helped his uncle in the home as best he could. He carried out his uncle's business transactions and Fakita did what young girls do. They help out, helping with the rest of the family too. Well, it just so happened as they grew older, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at Fakita in a different way. He no longer saw his little playful cousin, but now he saw a beautiful woman transforming before him. She was a woman who was strong. She was a woman that was trustworthy. She was a woman that was extremely intelligent. So he began to have feelings for her. 
like most men do. And believe it or not, she had feelings for him too. So the young prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gathered up the nerve one day and he went to his uncle Abu Talib and he asked permission to marry Fakita. And he just knew his uncle was going to approve of it. But unfortunately, Abu Talib denied it. He said, I'm sorry, son. He said, I have already accepted a proposal from Hubeira ibn Abu Wahab, who is a member of the wealthy Makhzum clan. He said, I accepted that offer for her years ago. Remember back in the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th century, children were married when they were young. In other words, they were promised in marriage, many of them at birth. Well, Abu Talib had promised uh, years ago that his daughter would marry this person. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kind of shocked. He was also hurt. He said, oh, uncle, why have you married her off to Hubeira instead of considering me? And Abu Talib told him, nephew, they are our in-laws. And you have to understand that the noble is only equal for the noble. You guys get what he was saying? You know, there's two different meanings that many of the, uh, of the scholars say that this could mean. This could mean that number one, Abu Talib owed a favor to that tribe. But most likely the scholars agree that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by him being an orphan, he had no money. So he was poor. And back then the poor could only be with the poor, the rich with the rich. They were all about status quo back then in those days. So imagine how heartbroken and hurt the young prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to be. And just to let you guys know, Fakita or Um Hani, she was heartbroken too because she secretly wanted to marry her cousin too because she really liked his honesty and his trustworthiness. So imagine how hurt she was to find out that she had been promised to a someone else other than her beloved cousin, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Fakita ended up marrying Hubeira and they lived in Mecca. Her husband Hubeira, he was a poet and many people describe him as being wise. He was wise, he was handsome, and he was very influential. He was rich. And he and Fakita had seven children. They had three daughters and four sons. Her oldest son was Hani, and that's where she got the nickname Um Hani from. Okay? So life goes on. She married, moved in with her husband, and she and her husband began their life together. And the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued his life. But then when the revelation came to him, his uncle Abu Talib supported him and protected him from the Quraysh. But he did not embrace Islam, Islam, even though all of Abu Talib's children became Muslim, and so did his wife. Well, Um Hani, by the way, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained very good friends with her because number one, they were cousins, and also her husband, the man she married, Hubeira. In the beginning, he liked the prophet Muhammad too. So even though they never married each other, they remained very close friends. And when the prophet Muhammad married Khadija, guys, remember when I did her story, Um Hani became one of the best friends of Khadija, ready Allahu Anha. So Um Hani and Khadija were very close. 
And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained close to her and her husband. When he received the revelation and the call to prophethood, after Khadijah converted to Islam, Um Hani became Muslim too. But her husband did not. But even though her husband did not become Muslim, he did not chastise her for being one. She had a big, beautiful home. And she lived in that house with her husband and children. And the prophet Muhammad, even when he was being abused by the other Quraysh, her and her husband always welcomed him there. So to see how close they were. They remained close because remember, blood is thicker than water. Um Hani was still his first cousin. Even though he could not marry her, she was remained his closest friend because they grew up together. They were very close in age. So when he was being persecuted, he could always seek refuge in her home. And he would always come to her home and hang out with her husband and her sons and her and seek refuge because by her husband being rich and wealthy, nobody bothered him. And he, they would not bother anyone that he protected. Remember we talked about in um, uh, Mukhtar's class, protection was everything back in those days. If you wanted the protection of somebody, they would leave you alone when you were around that person, okay? And after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married Khadijah, they all remained friends. But after the death of Khadijah, that's when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through the worst trial of his life. You guys remember we talked about it. This was after the boycott, after the Quraysh had boycotted his whole tribe. When the boycott was lifted, Khadijah died. And when she died, within three months, Abu Talib died. The prophet felt alone. He had no friends. He lost his wife, who was his support. He lost his uncle, who was his support. And he went to the town of Taif. This is when he went to Taif. And the people of Taif, they threw rocks at him and ran him away. So he was alone. The only person he could think to seek refuge with was Um Hani. Because remember, her husband, even though her husband was not Muslim, her husband allowed him to seek protection with them in their home. So after he came back from Taif, after Allah sent the angel of the mountains to ask the prophet if he wanted Allah to destroy the people of Taif, and the prophet said, no, let them live. Maybe their children will become Muslim. That's when the prophet came back to Mecca and he went to the home of Um Hani. Her and her husband and her children supported him and welcomed him in. Now I'm going to tell you why Um Hani is such an important figure. How many of you thought that when the prophet came back, and when he went on his night journey, he was in his house asleep. Nope, nope, nope. It was the home of Um Hani. When he came back from Taif, he sought solace with her because she was his family. She was his cousin. And she was protected with her family. So when they welcomed him in and they told him, go Muhammad and take some rest in the room, the spare room we had, that's when the most miraculous miracle took place. As the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lay in the bed sleeping in Um Hani's home, that's when the angel Jabril alayhi salam knocked at his bedroom door and came to him 
and took him on the miraculous journey to Jerusalem, to Palestine, and then to the ascension of the heavens. And by the crack of dawn, he returned to her home. So how many of you knew that? That it was her house that this occurred at? That morning when he was returned, the first thing he did was went to Um Hani. He said, cousin, cousin, come here. Fakita, come here. And he told her what happened. She knew that the prophet was an honest man. She knew that he was the best man ever. So she believed him. But she told him, oh, cousin, please. She said, I love you. She said, I love you for the sake of Allah. She said, and then I love you for myself. She said, please do not tell the people of what journey you went on because they won't believe you. She said, and the Quraysh may even hurt you. She said, and I love you and I want no harm to come to you. She begged the prophet. So for those of you who don't know, she was the first person. She was the first person. She was the first person that the prophet told about his night journey. And she believed him. And she feared for his life and begged him, begged him in the name of Allah to not tell anyone. And she begged him in the, in, in, through her love for her, as a result of her love for him, don't tell anyone. But being a prophet, he felt the need to deliver the message of Allah to the people. He told her, um, honey, honey, he said, I cannot hide what the Lord wants me to convey. So he went out. The next day went to the Kaaba and announced to the people of Mecca what happened, this journey he went on. And just like Um Hani said, the people did not believe him. They even tried to test the validity of his story. They began to ask him questions about the mosque in Palestine, what it looked like. And even though the prophet had never been there, even though the prophet had never seen it, he described the mosque to them in such great detail that it matched exactly what they knew of Masjid al-Aqsa. But still, they refused to believe him. And then you guys know what happened then. It was when Abu Bakr came back that Abu Bakr said, if Muhammad said he went on a journey, he went. And when Abu Bakr believed him, then that's when everybody else fell in. But the thing to note here is he went on that journey from the home of Um Hani. And when he returned, she was the first one he confided in. And due to her love for him and her love for Allah, she begged him, don't tell these people. So anyway, their relationship continued to be close. And then when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, Um Hani did not migrate. Remember, she remained in Mecca with her husband. And this is before Allah sent down the laws. This is before Allah sent down the law. This is before Allah sent down the law, making it forbidden for women to remain with non-Muslim husbands. But being that her husband was kind to her, her husband let her do her thing and he let her children believe in Allah. She didn't go through any um, abuse. OK, she remained in Mecca with her husband and her sons and she continued to practice Islam and nobody bothered her. Okay, because her husband was very influential and rich. Years later, after the Muslims grew in number and the Muslims grew in strength in Medina, that's when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put together his army and decided to enter Mecca to conquer it. But before this happened, guys, 
Allah has sent down the verses of the Quran saying that Muslim women cannot be with non-Muslim men, okay? And so this is when Um Hani's husband left. In fact, during this time, there were two unbelieving men who refused to convert to Islam when the prophet entered into Mecca and they ran to Um Hani's house and begged for her protection. She, she gave them her protection. But when her brother Ali found out, he came into her, heart, her house to capture and kill the two men. But Um Hani grabbed her brother and told him, do not go near them. She said, I have already promised them protection. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was outside her house and he heard the loud voices. So he rushed into her house to see what was going on. And the Prophet sided with her. He said, we give protection to whoever Um Hani has given protection to. So that's where that hadith came from. Um Hani gave protection to these two men. And that's when it came down by a law that any woman who, who protects a man, the man is protected. And those two men were so moved by the prophet Muhammad and by Um Hani that they said, you don't have to protect us, O prophet. We bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah and they converted to Islam. So that was Um Hani that gave the protection to two men. In the meantime, remember uh, uh, her husband, he was not Muslim. He had refused to convert to Islam. So when he heard that the prophet was coming there with an army, he left. And in Islam, that's when Allah sent down the law saying that any woman and any man you know, any woman married to a non-Muslim, you know, the marriage is null and void. So after the conquest of Mecca, that's when the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again went to uh, Um Hani. After the, they gave protection to those two men, the prophet proposed to her. He said, oh, Fakita, will you marry me? Will you be my wife now? But again, this time she refused him. She said, I can't marry you, cousin, because if I married you, my love for you is great. She said, but also my love for my children is great. She said, but my love for you is more than my love for them. She said, because not only do I love you as a man, she said, but I love you as the prophet of Allah. And I feel that I wouldn't be able to do justice with my children. She said, I feel that I will end up devoting my life to you instead of them. And that's when the prophet said the following famous hadith. He said, oh, Quraysh, the Quraysh women, they are the best women of the camels because they are good to their children and they take care of their husband's property. That's where that came from. Because again, he proposed to her because now that she was divorced, he had always loved her. But look at this woman. She said, I love you and I love my children but my love for you is greater than my love for them because not only do I love you as a man, but I love you as a messenger of Allah and I wouldn't be able to be just to my kids because I put you before even them and we're supposed to. As Muslims, our love for the prophet Muhammad is supposed to supersede even our love for our children. So you can see the faith this girl had, this woman had. Yes, she was in love with him, but she loved him as a prophet more than even a regular man. So after the conquest of Mecca, you guys know what happened. The Quraysh converted to Islam. 
Um Hani and her sons migrated to Medina to live. And she lived the rest of her life in this new Islamic state. And she raised her children by herself. But the love story doesn't end. After her children had grown up, she approached the prophet this time. She said, oh, Muhammad, my cousin. She said, my children are grown and I am now ready to marry you. But look at life. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her, oh, Fakida, oh, my cousin, it's too late because Allah just sent a new revelation to me. Allah just sent me a revelation saying that I cannot marry any cousins of mine who did not migrate to Medina before the conquest, subhanAllah. So too late. That's it. Can't marry you. I can't marry anybody who's a cousin of mine who did not migrate before the conquest. So she lost out and he lost out. In Medina, Um Hani became a staunch supporter for the cause of Islam. She was a source of strength and knowledge. She became one of the first female scholars. She became a transmitter of many hadiths. That is why the name Um Hani will live on forever in the books of Islamic literature. And just for me to share with you guys, we have, we, you know, if you were Arabic, as uh, 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 the sisters here tell me that helped me put this together, they said there are many books written about Um Hani. Of course, they're all in Arabic. She was a very, very great scholar. And uh, she's highly respected in the Arabic world. That's why her name is so common. There's a lot of people that name their children Hani and stuff after her. As far as when she died, her date of death is unknown, but we do know that she outlived her brother Ali. We all know that Ali was killed in 661. She lived longer than Ali but her exact uh, time of death is unknown. But that's the story of Um Hani, the first love of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A story that shows just bad timing. First time, her father denied it. Second time, she denied it. Third time, he had no choice but to deny it because Allah made it, can't marry no woman from your family who did not convert before the you know the conquest i mean did not migrate before the conquest subhanallah and just for me to share with everybody i know some of you're going to ask aisha was jealous of um honey too let me just put it out there yes aisha tells us in her own words that there was always a special relationship that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maintained with Um Hani. He respected her, he valued her opinion and everything else. And she had a little bit of jealousy for Um Hani because of that. Aisha tells us she felt a little jealousy for her because she was beautiful. You know, the Prophet admired her, he respected her just like he did Ali, okay? And he would consult with her about matters and stuff. So she always had a jealousy for Um Hani. So that's the story of Um Hani, Radiallahu Anha.